All right, you got what you wanted. Guys, after numerous requests, finally, Pure Passage offers Hajj. Experience the divine journey of Hajj, the most significant act of worship in Islam, performed on behalf of your loved ones by Pure Passage. Hajj is not only a spiritual obligation for every Muslim, but also a symbol of unity, peace and submission to Allah's will. Our devoted team of experienced sheikhs and students of knowledge will take on this holy pilgrimage on behalf of your family members who are unable to undertake this once in a lifetime journey. Our exclusive Hajj package includes the performance of the Hajj rituals, a detailed video report of the journey and a commemorative certificate marking the completion of this spiritual obligation. Don't miss out on this unique opportunity. Let our team take on this journey for you while honoring their legacy and providing you with peace of mind. Join us in the spiritual journey and leave a legacy that will last for eternity. Be'ith me love. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, finally, yes, finally, again, we're going to continue with the Prophet series today with the legacy of Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salam. No long intro on this one, guys. Just do me the favor. If you enjoy the content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And with no further ado, let's have a look. When I think of the Hajj, the name of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam comes to mind. Was he not the Nabi to who Allah ordered? O Ibrahim, make the call. Invite people to my house in Makkah al Mukarramah. Any part of the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, is absolutely amazing. And it was a messenger, and he is from the Ulil Azm min al Rusul, from the top this four guy, prophets yeah. and messengers. When I think of the Holy Kaaba, in Makkah al Mukarramah, the name of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam comes to mind. It's what very interesting. Not many people know this when they look at the Kaaba nowadays. Some conspiracy theorists even claim it is a black cube and this symbolizes the black cube of Saturn, some occult meaning that they attribute to the Kaaba. Those Islamophobes even claim that the Kaaba is satanic because it is black. But as you can see here, the Kaaba was not always black. This is simply a garb chosen by the Saudi government as far as I know and back in the day it was a simple house. In Makkah al Mukarramah, the name of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam comes to mind. Was he not the one that raised the foundations of the house? Was he not the one that built this house with his son Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam? That he was called Abu al-Anbiya, the father of the prophets. Such a noble name to be called the father of the Anbiya, of the prophets. That great Absolutely. prophet that when a person came to our prophet. That's why it's called prophet, the Abrahamic faiths to this very day. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he addressed him by the title, O best of mankind. Our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in his modesty, he said, no, that is not me. That is Ibrahim alayhi salam. Thousands and thousands of people are desperate and die to read namaz behind the maqami Ibrahim. The name of Ibrahim comes to mind. Was this not the blessed stone upon which Sayyidina Ibrahim would stand and he would act like a lift and he would make the house of Allah? When everybody is going to be stripped of their clothes, everybody is going to come to Allah the day of judgment naked, having no clothes on. That the first person to be clothed on the day of Qiyamah will be Ibrahim alayhi salam. And yes, he is deserving of this because Ibrahim, when he went into the fire, his clothes got burnt for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I think of the well of Zamzam, okay. the name of Sayyidina... This is very new to me, coming from a Christian background. We of course know about the burning bush, but there is no story whatsoever that the clothes of Ibrahim have been burned. Please let me know in the comment section if you know more about this subject. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam comes to mind. How this well has been quenching the thirst of millions and millions of people for thousands and thousands of years. And it will continue to quench the thirst of millions and millions of people right till the day of judgment. 
He is the only person that the Quran commands our Prophet Muhammad to look up to for guidance. Our Prophet is told to look up to him as a role model. When I think of the mountain Safa and Marwa and how... Which is absolutely amazing because no other so-called Abrahamic faith puts this emphasis on Abraham, on Ibrahim. It is truly only Islam that celebrates Abraham with such a respect, has holidays for Abraham. You cannot find that within Christianity or Judaism. Thousands of people perform Sahih by day and by night between these mountains and inshallah will continue to do so right till the day of judgment, the name of Sayyidina Ibrahim والسلام, comes to mind. My young friends, when I think of the holy city of Mecca and how this holy city of Mecca, once upon a time in a barren desert, today has become the capital of the Muslim world. Thousands and thousands from every corner of the globe head towards Mecca, flock towards Mecca. Every single day of the year, 365 days in a year. And I've been doing this for thousands and thousands of years. And will continue to do this for thousands and thousands of years. The name of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam comes to mind. Allah of course. After Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the most noble prophet of Allah is Ibrahim alayhi salam. Another name or another title for Ibrahim alayhi salam was that he was Khalil al-Rahman. He was the best friend of Allah. The one who is so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Khalil Allah, so close. I heard this terminology oftentimes within the context of Islam, a friend of Allah. And I truly love this expression. Within Christianity, oftentimes people talk about saints. But the concept of sainthood, in my personal opinion, elevates a human being so far above what it actually means to be human. After all, the prophets have been humans as well. And the worship is to God alone. Therefore, to call them saints is not befitting for human beings. This is how I see it. However, a friend of Allah is the perfect description. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Khalil Allah. So close. So close. Whenever Allah said anything to Ibrahim, alayhi salam, he never had an excuse. He always submitted. Exactly. When I see the shops of Mecca laden with fruit, all types of fruit, the fruits of winter, you will find them in summer. The fruits of summer, you will find them in winter. Fruit from every corner of the globe. And this has been happening not just today or yesterday, for hundreds and hundreds of years. The name of Sayyidina Ibrahim والسلام, comes to mind. Was he not that Nabi that raised his hands and made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Oh Allah, give the inhabitants of Makkah Thamarat. Give them fruits. Oh Allah, give them the end result of everything. This is why my young friend, when you go to Makkah, not only will you find fruits, Thamarat, the end result of everything, you will find in Makkah al Makarama. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had accepted the dua of Ibrahim. Oh Allah, give me and make me a good remembrance on the tongue of people after me. The great patriarch of all of the Abrahamic religions, the Prophet Ibrahim, the single most respected human being on the face of this earth. Because every single major religion of earth looks up to the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Look at the Christian. Yeah, some more, some less. As I already said, can they truly claim to be Abrahamic faiths? Because the emphasis on Abraham is only found within Islam. Because Islam identifies what Abraham did. Abraham submitted his will to God. He certainly did not pray to Jesus. He was prior to Jesus, obviously. So therefore, he did not believe in a trinity. Moreover, within the Islamic context, it is said that Ibrahim was his own Ummah, which which means that even his own people did not believe in him. So he went on his own way. Ibrahim went on his own way and simply submitted to God, no matter what the question or the command was. Sacrifice your son. I hear and I obey. Abraham was the best in submission to God. And this is the true identification, the red thread of what religion means. Religion is submission to God, i.e. Islam. There are only two more modes of being in this world, submission or rebellion, choose one. They accept Ibrahim and they look up to Ibrahim as a prophet. The Jews respect Ibrahim and look up to him as a prophet. Sure. And no doubt about us the Muslims, 
except Ibrahim and look up to him. But the greatest venerated human being in the history of this world has been the Prophet Ibrahim. When I see women roaming around in late hours of the night in Makkah al Makarama at one o'clock at night, at two o'clock at night, with hundreds and hundreds of rials in their pockets, never mind rape, not one single human being even raises an eye with an evil intention towards them. The name of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam comes to mind. Was he not that Nabi that made this dua? Oh Allah, make this city a city of peace, a city of Amen. He is such a great man that all the messengers who came after him were from his family. Subhanallah. He is such a great man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him. Not once, not twice, but again and again. And he passed every single test. When I see the disabled, when I see the blind performing the Hajj, when I see the old and weak that can barely walk, traveling thousands of miles to Makkah al Mukarramah for every from every corner of the globe, the name of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam comes to mind. Was he not the one that made the du'a? Oh Allah, fill the hearts of some from amongst men with love towards them. This is why you find my young friends, even though the Hajj is a very long and tiring journey, no matter how many times a haji experiences difficulty he wants to go again and again and again and whenever he gets the opportunity irrespective of the difficulties he makes his way to Makkah al Mukarramah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was taken to the heavens and he reached the seventh heaven he saw in that heaven Ibrahim alayhi salam his back was on Baytul Ma'mur Baytul Ma'mur is a place where 70,000 angels come every single day and they do tawaf around there and they never come back again. By Allah, Allah has given this man a special rank and a special honor. The Prophet that was at the highest position, who was at the highest level in the heavens, was Nabiullah Ibrahim. When I think of our beloved Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the name of Ibrahim comes to mind. Was he not the Nabi that made this dua? Oh Allah, send from amongst them a messenger from amongst them. Oh Allah, send Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yatru alayhim ayatika. Muhammad will recite your verses upon them. Wa yu'allimuhum al-kitaba wal-hikmah. He will teach them the book. He will teach them hikmah. Wa yuzakihim. Oh Allah, he will purify them. Inna ka anta al-aziz al-hakim. Oh Allah, you are the Almighty and you are the All-Wise. When I think... He followed directly in the line of Ibrahim. Of ourselves, the name of Ibrahim comes to mind. Was he not the Nabi who was sammakum al-Muslimin that gave us our name and that gave us our identity true and this is what absolutely is correct and this is why yet again i say that islam is the only abrahamic faith because islam yet again does what ibrahim did they're submitting their will to god this is, which then led to this nation anything else does not make player, sense then you appreciate allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammadin kama sallayta ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim innaka hamidun majid Ibrahim salam is different. First of all, Ibrahim salam was making hijrah for all of his life. And then in many places, he would go and he would be the only believer. Exactly. When he it's went to the Egypt, he told his wife, me and you are the only believers here. Wow. When he was making dawah to his people in Iraq, only him and the Lut were the believers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a name that wasn't given to anybody else. And that is Kana Ummah. Ibrahim alayhi salam was an ummah. He was a nation by himself. Exactly. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. This is already it for the first introduction to Prophet Ibrahim. However, that being said, this series continues with four parts in total. Please let me know in the comment section if you want me to react to all of them or if one episode is enough for you and we should proceed with the other prophets. Please let me know in the comment section and I will react accordingly. That being said, guys, as throughout the video, I cannot stress enough how important it is is to identify what Prophet Abraham, Prophet Ibrahim did, what he truly did, what his relationship 
was with God. Only Islam identifies this relationship. The same applies to Prophet Adam, Adam, the first man. What did he do? Did he have a concept of Trinity? Did he pray to Jesus? What was the religion of Adam? It was submission to God. There is nothing else, as I said, two modes of existence, submission or rebellion. And of course, the same applies yet again to Abraham. Here you could see it in the video. He said, we are the only believers here. What does it mean to be a believer? If you think about a believer in a Christian context, you must be someone that believes in Jesus Christ, in the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, and in the rising of the death of Jesus Christ. Then you are considered a believer amongst Christians. But is this truly what a believer is? We have to boil it down simplistically. A believer is someone that believes in God, the creator of all things. And if there is such a man that believes in the creator of all things, of course he will obey this Lord and he will submit his will to this God. This is the only thing that makes logical sense. And this is yet again the identification of Islam. Ibrahim was a submitter to God. Now you simply have to do a Google search and find out what it means to submit your will to God in Arabic. Ultimately, you will come to the conclusion that this is a Muslim, someone that practices Islam. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Check them out, just a click, and you can see all the links in the description box. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.